specifically uh, commanded to observe the first day of the week as the Lord's day. Well, we come together to sing praises to pray before him, to hear the teaching of his holy writ, to give of our means as we have purpose in our hearts, and to enter into the coming, sharing the communion, uh, remembering his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Nothing more, nothing less, but to come into this place to worship him with all our heart, wow. all our soul, wow. and all of our might. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful to be here this morning. I'm thankful to see each and every one of you who are here uh, this morning. Uh, if you are busy <coughs> with us, as always, you are honored guests. We're delighted to have you uh, with us in the assembly. And if you have joined us by our conference call visit with us, we are thankful to have you. And it is our prayer, as always, that something will be said in God's uh, word that will cause you to ask that question, what must I do to be saved? Because at the end of the day, we are trying to ensure that you have what you need in order to be saved. And those who are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, while you have already put them on in baptism, amen, mm -hmm. uh, we are here to encourage you, uh, to help you to maintain and to retain, amen, if necessary, to regain your salvation. You can lose it. Be there holding your bad news, but you can lose it. What's your proper man in the whole world? Lose his own soul. So we should always be conscious that we can lose our soul salvation. That thing, it can be lost. And what would that profit you? So we want to encourage you to continue to stay in the Lord. It's a better place to be. To be in the Lord. Right. And if you're visiting, you have questions about uh, the lesson or something that you may observe in the worship service, mm -hmm. by all means, give us an opportunity. Don't go across the street and talk to them about it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ask us about it. You, if you visit us for two minutes, you will know that we are very loving people. Amen. Amen. And we're the children of God. And we have the love of God uh, for our fellow man. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you that you love one another, amen? Yeah. So we have love for one another, and we have love for you as well. You want to be saved. Let us continue to be uh, mindful of those that do now and pray for them. Uh, as you see the list of uh, here, uh, individuals and families, our uh, question for us, and I know there will probably be more added to that. Uh, let's specifically keep in mind those who are having ongoing medical issues at this time as we speak, and then those who have lost loved ones Recent because you know, that's always tough to deal with, uh, yeah. also the loved one. Uh, but nevertheless, God's in control, and we want to be mindful of the Meadows family and Brother Meadows. Our own Brother Meadows, who two weeks ago was sitting right here. Uh, he's, he's gone, amen. amen. And uh, I remind of Brother Meadows, and he sang that song, I Should Not Be Moved. That's mm -hmm. when we had to sing it because it's one of the songs he led. Yeah. You know why? So not be moved. That was Brother Mel's song right there. And that song has been in my heart uh, since he uh, passed. Uh, just keep that family in, in, in your prayers. Keep, it, keep that family in your prayers. Yeah. And let me get into what I need to do. I want to thank Brother Kerry for putting it on last week. They did a wonderful job. Yeah. It's always getting Brother Ty. They did a wonderful job. I was reading the lesson on last week and gave us some stuff to really, really consider and think about. Amen. Amen. This is such a good to sit and think about the way of uh, Adam, or the way of Christ. Amen. The way of Adam and the uh, way of Christ. It's amazing how many times you can see the same text and somebody else preach it and you get some more out of it and stuff. Yes, and man, he, he brought all kinds of stuff out. I was like, man, he brought that out from the way, you know. <laughs> I hadn't seen none of that. It was just wonderful. 
things off. He did so. That always happens with God's word. It's going to reveal itself to you. Amen. Yeah. Uh, the more you study God's word, the more you come to love God's word, the more you come to love God's word and know about God. You can't help but to love him more. Amen. 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 You can't help but to love him more. Isaiah chapter 40 this morning. Isaiah chapter 40. And in keeping with what I've been trying to do to start the year off, uh, I initially started the year off uh, with the subject, God's offer to uh, lighten your heavy load. I don't know how many remember that uh, lesson. Uh, think, uh, think back to chapter eight, uh, 11, verse 28, uh, when Jesus says, come unto me. Uh, but it, it, was, it was from the point, stand on God's offer to light your heavy load, and help you burden down, and, and you get tired, amen, of carrying stuff around, amen. Right. Yeah, but we don't have to just carry stuff, God has offered. <laughs> this sign has offered, he said, come unto me, all you that labor in our heavy way, and I will give you rest. He's, he's made the offer. Amen? Mm -hmm. I don't mind saying, let me have the offer. I want to see what someone has to offer. Amen? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm mean, not buying too, but at least I, I'm willing to listen. Mm -hmm. like, do, do your best. Convince me. Change my mind. So Jesus says, let me offer this to you, and, and I'm going to just tell you, brother, this you bought it to. Amen? Mm -hmm. so I take all my burdens to him, brother Thompson. Yeah. 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 He said, bring it to me. I take it to him. Amen? Mm -hmm. And not one time and he said, you know, you're close to your limit. Mm. <laughs> now, one time has he said, you want to stand like this with else opportunity? Because he made that offer to me. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to take it to him. Amen. And now, one time has he, has he, you know what? Nah, I ain't got time for that. Mm. I said, now nah, I'll be served. He said, something exactly what, that's exactly what he means. Amen. Mm -hmm. So he said, come unto me, bring it to me. Amen. So he's offering. What are you going to do with the offer? He's making the offer, amen. Yeah. It's up to who? It's up to us. And then last, uh, the last time I preached a couple weeks ago, came from the subject, all my trials. We, we talk about trials and the things that we go through and stuff, and it's all for the purpose of seeing, of for God to see what we are. You go to school, and you never get, uh, never given a test. Why are you going? And who's teaching you? How are you going to know when you know what you need to know if you never test it? All right. So from the subject of all my trials, we talk about God. He tests us. Mm -hmm. yeah. He tests us. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something about God's test. Got all over the book. All over the book. First Peter 1 3, he's given us all things. Uh, second Peter 1 3, first Peter 1, I'm going to read it. He's given us all things that pertain, that pertain to life. Tell you how to live. And godliness. Tell you mm -hmm. how to behave. Tell you how to think. Tells you what thinking is pleasing to him. Or maybe not at all. So, no, he's, it's all book to him. Mm. So, I all overlook tests. So, we talk from the subject. All my trials. Mm. And what's behind trials and that this purpose for testing us. And what his expectations are. And to continue to work on us. And what Brother Kerry did on last week fit right into what I'm trying to do. I appreciate the way you came at that uh, last week. I never get a title. <laughs> but I know the message, amen. Mm. But I want to talk to us this month in just a few minutes from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. And the subject being, wait on the Lord and renew thy strength. And the reason why I believe this fits right in is because sometimes we get just a little too uh, impatient. And we like that uh, J.G. Whitworth commercial, amen? Mm -hmm. It's my money. <laughs> I want it now. So God say, you won't wait on me if you want the blessing. the importance of waiting on the Lord as we run this race. Amen? This race is not, it's 
not about the, about the one who runs the quickest, but it's about the one who endures. endures. Yep. Who, most people go out and, and run a marathon, 26 mile or 13 mile half marathon. They have no intentions of winning it. They just want to cross the finish line, amen? Yep. It's not going to be one winner. But when it comes to life and then the afterlife, it's not limited to just one. He said, well, Bishop, how do you notice how Paul said it's a trial of righteousness that's waiting? And not just for me only. All right. All right. Huh? Paul said, it's not, it's not just waiting for me, but for all. So it's called trio. For all of them. Just like Paul's name, I don't think I mean to sleep on something. Oh. I just like Paul's name. <laughs> So see, know us? Paul said, not, not just for me, but not just for one winner in this race, amen? Yeah. Whether well, you run as far or fast, Paul's finish line. Mm -hmm. It's about enduring. Amen. Holding up. And I want us to understand the importance of waiting on the Lord and allowing Him to renew our strength because we have struggles and difficulties as we run this race. Amen. It's, it's not, a, it's not an obstacle free race. There's all kinds of obstacles. <laughs> Amen. It's not like being on the track and running. It's kind of like running through the bush for well, the time being done. Amen. Amen. It's just, well, that's kind of fun. You, you run to follow booby traps and the enemy here and over there and then something dangerous over there. It's that kind of fun. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's not running by yourself. Right. So don't think this thing is about getting on the track and running four laps. And then you give him a trophy. That's, that's, well, well, good, so that's too easy. It ain't that way. And a lot of people come in and think in that way, and they get discouraged, and they're gone. They don't see them anymore. They give up. So to know up front, there's some obstacles out there. But if you wait on the Lord, when you get tired, you're going to get tired. But if you wait on the Lord and allow Him to be new, your strength. Yeah. We'll get back in the race. You may even fall to a walk sometimes. You may even fall to a crawl. And I know as Christians, some of us don't remember some times in our lives as Christians, we were crawling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't stop. We were on all fours, crawling a little bit. You know, there's a picture of it. We were crawling. But we didn't stop. Yeah. We were still in the race. And God renewed our strength, and we got up, and we got back in the race. And that's why I want to encourage us to stay in the race. Ooh. So in Isaiah, and I need my other pair of glasses, y'all, so. I mean, I look pretty, but I can see. Ooh. <laughs> I bet I got a real glass at home this morning. So. In Isaiah 40, verse 28, he says, Hast thou known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? That's promising. Neither is weary. That cautions us about trying to follow man, right? Right. Paul said, Be follows of me as I am of Christ. Mm. So when you just start following man, not caring about whether he's father God or not, that man, there's gonna come a time, or uh, there can come a time, amen, when that man becomes weak and weary. But Isaiah who says, uh, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of earth, he don't faint. Mm. And he don't get weary. He says he is such a one as there is no searching of his understanding. Mm. In fact, here's what he does. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Come on. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. uh -huh. My girl, friend, sister Dickerson, <laughs> she's always saying, Brother Bishop, a day of battery can't jump. Mm. A day of battery, amen. <laughs> I'll tell y'all what that conversation was about. Y'all ain't, ain't old enough to know. Amen. <laughs> she was saying, look, the bitch was dead about it. I can't talk to dead about it. So y'all may be old enough to know about that. <laughs> but I, I, I may not have the strength that you need. 
But I said, I said, God, him to have no might, he increases. He has the power. They'll strengthen. He said, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men, at some point, they're going to have difficulties to ultimately fall. But watch this. But they that wait upon the Lord shall be new. It's like, man, I, I, had, I had my battery phone, baby, and I had one other week. Battery was reduced, all of them were reduced in August of 20. I think it was during that COVID shutdown, so I don't know what people were doing. I had to take back three different batteries for three different vehicles because of they did the made bad. But it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And the point is, utterly fall at some point, things will fail. Just like those batteries. At some point, that point will fail. You say, well, my battery is six years old. I reckon you can go get a new battery. But you want way past the limit. And it's going to fall. And here, the, uh, Isaiah say, at some point, even the young men, and this is in reference to those who are, uh, have strength, amen, at some point, even they're going to have difficulties. Mm. But he says, but here's the promise, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, Go ahead and do your set on eagles. You have to understand that reference. All right. mm -hmm. They shall run and not be weary, mm -hmm. and they shall walk and faint not. Mm -hmm. As I look at this lesson, and I always like to try to give us something that's going to, we're really going to hold on to from the lesson. If you don't remember all, there's going to be something that's going to bring it back to you when you need it. Amen. And I want to say that with you here shortly. As I, as I prepare to close. He says, uh, I ask the question, what causes Christians to quit the walk of faith? Mm. If there are many things that we can listen, we sit out to do so, but just for a few minutes this morning, ask that you, you, you take heed and listen as I lay out uh, some common reasons, a few common reasons that Christians are uh, allowed to come in their way to be a stumbling block for them. And make them quit following God. They give up. When you get the opportunity, I want you to search a term called uh, generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Generational wealth. But generational wealth, basically in a nutshell, it talks about setting yourself up into some kind of business uh, some kind of enterprise, entrepreneurship, uh, something uh, where you can build it up and then pass it off to your uh, your uh, your heirs. Mm -hmm. And then the, the idea is that they come into it and they continue to build it up and when they're gone, it passes and it's, it's generational. Now, a lot of people put a lot of effort into research and study when it comes to the subject of generational wealth. Go, go, go search it. See how, how many titles come up. And most of them are in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that's all fine and that. It's all fine and that. That's good. Okay? Almost as legal. Amen. Uh, Almost as legal, I say. But generational wealth. And what are they doing? They are setting their family up so that they don't have uh, financial struggles. They're setting up their arms up so there, there, there should be no financial struggles for them. When they talk about generational wealth. But I believe that there's a wealth that far exceeds and outweighs right. generational wealth that we ought to be thinking about right. 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 our families. Right. You see, there is physical wealth, mm -hmm. generational wealth, there's also uh, physical wealth, there's physical health, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a little bit more difficult to set up because one body is different from another body. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. And in, in fact, the case is that sometimes what uh, ailment you may have had, it may have been passed off to your era, to your amen, to your lineage. So, so that's that's difficult to to try to guarantee uh, a physical health, a health from a physical standpoint. That's difficult to set up for your family. You know what? I'm going to make sure that my family is healthy. It's not always the case. The chances are more likely that you may pass along something that's, that's dangerous to their health than you pass along something that's beneficial. It's just the case. Amen? Well, look it up. But there is something we can pass along. Amen? To our families. And that is our spiritual health. Amen? Yeah. And the things that we've been talking about, and what we want to talk about today for just a few minutes, wait on the Lord and renew thy strength. I'm looking at this today from the standpoint, and yet you've heard this lesson before, it was like five, six, seven years ago. I'm bringing it back to you. Amen. I think it'll benefit us even more now, because we know more than we did five, six, seven years ago. Amen. I would hope. Amen. Right. But I want to talk about uh, uh, spiritual health. A generational health from a spiritual standpoint. And if you would, very, very briefly, let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, keep in mind what Isaiah says. But look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Because these things I want to hit briefly here in a few minutes, uh, that they're going to be an added blessing if you if you set out to do them and, and look at this lesson and say, you know what? It's not just about me. It's not just about me, but it's about my children and my children's children and the effect that I can have on their life. See, we're going to affect our lives one way or another, amen? And I recommend and pray that your prayer is that as a Christian, as a child of God, I want to benefit my offspring, my children, and my children's children through uh, spiritual health. And when I talk about generational, from generation to generation, that's how I want to benefit mine more than the than the, the physical, or even more than the than the, 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 the financial. Amen. I want to uh, to to lead them a uh, generational, amen, spiritual help. Let me see what I'm talking about. Second uh, Timothy chapter one. Paul writing to Timothy. His son in the gospel, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, Paul says here, uh, let's start verse number 1. Verse number 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 1, Paul says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, mm. he says to Timothy, so you understand who he's talking to here, and the, and, and the love he has for him, and the concern he has for his well-being, especially from a spiritual standpoint. He says, my beloved, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace. Those are spiritual. Amen. Those are spiritual. He says, from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. He says, I thank God whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience. That without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers. That's spiritual. Night and day. Then he goes on to say, Great desire to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Mm. And then in verse 5, what I want us to be says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, what I see you in your faith, what I see, your genuine faith, your genuine display of faith. Faith is on display, amen. Yeah. Think about it. I'm not saying you got to walk around a big shirt with a big C on the front of it. Ain't no Christian man, Christian woman. But your faith is on display every day. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, every time you step out the house, every time you get out the bed, your faith is on display. Don't think it is, mess up. People will remind you. Y'all look at it, y'all watching it. Let us know. Let us know. They are watching. He says, when I call to remembrance, 
the unfeigned faith that ascend thee with dwelt first. Here's what I'm talking about generational spiritual health. Which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice. And I'm persuaded that in thee also. Paul here is describing spiritual generational, amen, health. Saying that you can so influence. He says, I see in you what I saw in your grandmother, what I saw in your mother. You can influence in such a way your offspring, your children, and your children's children. That's generational spiritual health. It's 50-50 once you pass on physically to them, health-wise. Yeah. You ever look at yourself or see something about yourself that's part of your body and you say, well, I got all this hair from my daddy and this is a woman talking. They had all that hair on his face and look at me. Yeah. Or maybe you look at your daddy and you say, hey, you know, it's not me and you get away with me here. I hope I ain't something nobody told me. My dad gave me this female. My dad gave me to go. Amen. So let's the thinking what you pass on. Amen. From a physical standpoint. But think about if you have the opportunity to pass on generational, spiritual health, or you can call it wealth if you want to. If you have an opportunity to pass that on to your offspring, why would you not want to do that? Mm. Mm. Uh, Lois did. Eunice, she did. But Paul said, I see it in you, Dr. Timothy. He said, I saw it in your grandmother, and I saw it in your mother. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's generational, spiritual well-being, or health. Timothy saw his mother, spiritual life. Timothy saw his grandmother's spiritual life. And Paul saw that Timothy had been influenced by them. Amen. Amen. And what I'm saying this morning as I close here, what I'm saying this morning as I close here, people will give up on the Lord, they fall away from the church, but what you are doing is not just you giving up and falling away. Come on. You're passing that along. You're doing damage to the very ones we say we love and care about the most, our offspring, our generation that comes out of us. We're doing damage to them when we give up on the Lord. What causes us a quick walk of faith? In, in John chapter 6, briefly, just a few things. In John chapter 6, in John chapter 6, because it happens. Can you believe you walk along with Jesus and Jesus say something and you say, that's too much? Mm -hmm. can, you imagine, can you imagine being that person? Mm -hmm. I, I can't. I don't know about that one. You're walking with Jesus. You're not walking with somebody who walked with Jesus. You're not walking along reading the words that Jesus spoke from a book. You think it can't happen? That you can stop walking with the Lord? Yeah. yeah. In John chapter 6, verse number 6 to 6, very quickly here, it says in John chapter 6, verse number 6 to 6, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. You think it can't happen? You think you can't uh, stop, stop to look at the Bible and say, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of reading this, I'm tired of hearing Brother Bishop preach, I'm tired of hearing the song they can sing, I'm tired of the guys doing communion. You don't think it can happen? Mm -hmm. When you have people who are walking with Jesus, mm -hmm. they turn back. Yeah. You think it can't happen? We have to know yeah. that it can happen. Right. If it can happen to them, it can definitely happen to us. Right. But we're trying to Remind you to hold on to, to what you have not seen. Amen. Amen. You have not handled them. These guys touched Jesus and shook his hand and sat down and ate with him. Yeah, right. And sat around the fire and laughed with him and whatever. Yeah. And then some of them turned around and went back. Mm -hmm. It can happen. He 
He said, unto the trail you go also go away. I love what Peter said here.